Okay, today we're building a tenoning jig that you can make for your table saw. You'll be interested in this, particularly if you have a table saw with a high-low style rip fence or you're considering getting one. So this has got some great little features. Toggle clamps hold the workpiece in position and it's got this custom-made walnut handle on the back for good control. You may notice the basic base and frame of this jig is similar to one we did recently. That's a splining jig for your table saw. Same concept, it rides on the high-low fence of your table saw. One's for splining cuts, like making this box with decorative corners. The other one is for making a more traditional mortise and tenon joint. I like to use mortise and tenon joints with just about every project I build. They're really a staple of arts and crafts style furniture. Sure, you can put things together with dowels or a biscuit joint now and again, but I really think you should get in the habit of using mortise and tenon joints for their strength and versatility. There's a couple of toggle clamps on the front that'll hold the workpiece securely in a vertical position, and we'll show you two ways to use this jig. We'll pull off some of the accessories we normally have on the saw, like the push stick and this custom sacrificial fence. To make our tenoning jig, you'll need a piece of one inch thick MDF. This could easily be hardwood, but you'll want to plane it to size right in between the steel and the aluminum components of the high-low fence. It does need to be able to slide easily without too much friction. You also need a spacer that's exactly sized for the thin dimension of the aluminum fence. And then the vertical component of the tenoning jig. Once this is all sandwiched together, you want to ensure that it still slides easily across the fence. So we'll go ahead and glue the fence components together and temporarily brad nail them in position. And if some of this looks familiar, it should because this is the same base that we used for our recent jig, which was a splining jig for the table saw. And I think it's a great blueprint for any jig you might want to build with a high-low fence. And so we'll tack that spacer in position, just make sure we're flush here, and get that tacked away. One inch brad nails. For this part, we can switch to longer inch and a quarter brad nails. Now that the basic assembly is glued together and brad nailed, make sure that it still slides smoothly over the high-low fence bring an accurate square into position to make sure that you're just dead square with the cast iron face of the table saw. Looks like we're right on. So now we've made up the backer block for the vertical fence and this is a critical part. We're going to attach this with some glue and some brad nails for the permanent attachment. What you want to do though is make sure that it sits perfectly square this way. To, once you've double checked that you're perfectly square to the table, go ahead and set that position with brads. And then we'll need a means to attach the workpiece to the jig. So to that end, we'll add some toggle clamps here with number 10 by 5 8 screws. So even just using a dado blade stack, you can make nice tenons for your woodworking projects. So we need a little handle for the back of the jig so we can make safe controlled tenon cuts. Should we use a store-bought handle or should we get a nice chunk of walnut and go over to the lathe? I think you already know the answer to that. So now that we have the handle and the toggle clamps all installed, I think we're ready to go. There's two ways to use this jig, really. One, you can pre-cut your shoulder lines with a standard blade at the table saw, and then go ahead and arrange it vertically to finish cutting your tenon. Or you can set up your saw with a dado blade and make the tenon in one fell swoop. We'll demonstrate it both ways.
And then there's the other method where you've pre-cut the shoulders with a single width blade. Now, of course, the depth of cut is determined by those previously made shoulder cuts, but you'll want to align the rip fence so that you're gonna remove your quarter inch material on either side. And we'll go ahead and position the workpiece in the jig, tighten those toggle clamps, and we'll make those cuts. When you're passing the workpiece past the blade, ideally you'd like that small piece to fall to the open side so it's not a kickback danger. Make sure you're not removing the piece of material as it's trapped between the workpiece and the jig. Here we go. And if you don't mind installing a quick clamp, you can actually take care of the side shoulder cuts as well. Just make another adjustment on the rip fence so the waist piece again falls to the free side of the blade and we'll make those two cuts. So you can make some great looking tenons with this custom made jig for your table saw. And really, mortise and tenon joints are a hallmark of quality craftsman furniture. And so you can get interesting combinations. You can do standard tenons that fit into an angled mortise if you use uh, cradles, angled cradles, and a miter gauge, for instance. So you can come up with some interesting combinations. But on the tenon side, it's just a basic cut that you can make with this jig. So that's a neat option. You can make frames for glass doors that already have the rabbit pre-made and that's because the tenon of the joint is actually offset and you would make that with a tenoning jig like this so it's a great option to have for your table saw and you can make some really intricate joints that'll help you out with your woodworking all right guys there's a rundown on how to make your own custom tenoning jig for the table saw especially if you're using a high low style fence the jig has some great features like toggle clamps on the front and that custom turned walnut handle on the back for really solid control. It's a great jig to have around the shop and it'll help you make really clean tenons in two different ways. Also check the description box for information on the splining jig that we made recently. It has similar construction and it'll help you make nice decorative boxes. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.